a lack of parity in terms of competition. I think that's the primary issue with it. Um, uh, and uh, I think what you're trying to do is trying to separate the the, con- the questions about identity from the questions of fairness within a sporting competition. Yeah, and I do think they are different. They are different things. Um, uh, they are. It's you know, it, it's not the same thing, but it's not a totally dissimilar conversation to things like drug use, performance enhancing drug use. In terms of if there's something that's seen as giving a perceived unfair advantage or disadvantage on any participants, certainly in the individual sports and and stuff like that, like swimming and athletics, for example, um, I think it applies in, in a in a similar way, although a totally different conversation. Um, and a totally different approach needs to be taken to those conversations but it is still ultimately giving a a a fundamental unfairness in in the competition I'd say overall it's a regrettable thing to have to do Um, but ultimately I do think on the balance of fairness of play I think it's the right thing to do Um, but I don't necessarily think that kicking it into the long grass is the right thing because I don't think it's an issue that's going to go away. So I think, unfortunately, some teams are going to, or some somebody's going to have to be the first kind of sporting federation to come out and make a clear ruling on it. And I do think that when that happens, I think other ones will fall into line, um, which, whichever way you choose to, whichever way you choose to manage it. Yeah. Um, but it's not easy. It's really, it's really complicated. It's not uh, because we not... pride ourselves on in, on inclusion um, in our sport. Uh, we know that we don't always get it right in terms of things on you know off the field and around the the, the matches. We've we've seen incidents of racism, homophobia, what what have you, um, and just distasteful behaviour in general um, at times, but. But in a way, we're kind of you're looking at participation and safety and um, level playing fields and all those aspects, and it's such a dicey, complex thing. I think I wouldn't imagine that rugby league won't come up with some sort of solution in the future that doesn't that that allows transgender people to not feel marginalized to not feel included um but it it might not unfortunately be the standard 13 aside men's women's etc games you know there's there's certainly for example nothing excluding them from taking part in the wheelchair game if they if there's transgender people who want to be in part of rugby league there's, there's other non-contact versions of the sport as well which are you know, played across genders, across abilities, all of those things um, that help make our sport so inclusive. But it is such a sensitive topic, and I really, I don't know how we address it without upsetting some people. And I really, it's really a sad thing that some people will be upset. It is, but you can't, you can't ignore the um... no. The potential issues that it would cause. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And it, and I think it's a bigger issue for individual sports, as I said about the swimming. You know, mm. if you talk about somebody who is, you know, percentage points better than the competition, that's not, um, that's not right. No. It's not right. So th- th- that that's 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 why it needs to be addressed um, in all sports um, to some extent or another. Uh, another late line in um set another new story rugby the rugby football league has announced it has made a profit of one million pounds in 2021 it's first since 2016 the governing body puts the unexpected boost down to rigorous cost and financial management and reshaping the organization and its cost base additionally a profit of three hundred eighty thousand from the sale of its red hall office in leeds as part of the relocation to aad campus in manchester the RFL, which lost a combined total of two million from 2017-2018, also says the profit was aided by the deferral of a 900,000 government COVID loan. So again, love rugby league with the fantastic on the ball reporting there for that. But um, a good news story out of rugby league. Yes, 
as, as always with some caveats yeah because <laughs> because you've got you've got a one-off boost there haven't you you can't sell red hall every year no um because otherwise you know i could tell you this lovely bridge in london every year um but um and obviously the, there's this deferment of 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 covid funds which is um ultimately will need to be addressed so cautious optimism um i would say uh, is the greeting to this and hopefully things like things like the world cup will see a boost this year as well yeah and if they've restructured in a way that helps them maintain being sustainable um and it's not just a kind of cut costs without thinking about how it impacts the future of the governing body and so they're costs that are just going to get layered back on down the line and it's not a long-term sustainable structural type thing then of course you have to take this with a pinch of salt but if some of the changes they've made are um you know are still in line with other future goals and stuff like that then then it's got to be taken positively so you know overall we have to be we have to be happier with a a profit more than a loss although like i've said so many times in the past before probably back in 2016 the last time we talked about a profit is governing bodies shouldn't be making profits they should be telling us where that money's being spent to continue the sports advancement because it's not about yes. it's not about profits is it no in, in, a, in a for a governing body they're not there to make money but I, I would say a fair substantial part of that one million should definitely be uh, earmarked for repaying that COVID loan because yeah. that's going to be that's going to be called upon at some point. Um, shall we finish with a, a sad story? Do you want to yes. tell us that one? So former Great Britain Wigan and Penrith Panthers back row at Bill Ashurst has died at age seventy four. Born in Wigan, he came through the ranks at his hometown club to make 185 appearances over two spells, scoring 74 tries and kicking 146 goals. Uh, Ashurst was part of the wave of British players signed by Australian Cubs and joined uh, Penrith along with international teammate Mike Stevo Stevenson. He later played for Wakefield and made a cameo for Runcorn while a coach. I believe he was 40 when he played for Runcorn when yeah. they were in, the, in dire straits at one point. Yeah, certainly one of the sort of legendary names in in Wigan's history. Um, uh, you know, and someone who made an impact on both sides of the world as well in in rugby league. So, um, you know, it's uh, sad to hear of his passing. And um, as always with these things, our our thoughts and um, condolences go out to his his close friends and his family. So, R.I.P. Bill. Yeah, absolutely. Right, let's go and make some guesses, shall we? Let's do it. Predictions time. Round 16 of Super League is nearly upon us. Um, Thursday night, so probably tomorrow by the time you're listening to this. 8pm on Sky. It's St. Helens versus Leeds, which... You know, in many a year gone by, you would be thinking big top of the table fixture, but of course Leeds are outside of the playoffs, and uh, and Saints are starting to get their act together, aren't they, with their new spine minus Lewis Dodd. Um, so I I can't see anything other than a comprehensive Saint Helens victory. I've got Saints by eighteen. What about you, Al? I can't disagree with that. Saints by twenty. Um, Friday 8pm Sky game Warrington versus Hull FC this one I found a bit tougher to pick but I know that Hull's attack is basically seriously um, hampered with Jake Connor not being available but Warrington's attack is Warrington's attack so that's pretty hampered by being Warrington's attack in 2022 so it's it's a bit of a, a toss up. I'm gonna let you go first on, on what you you think of this one. This is an absolute I mean Warrington's nat- been shit at home, haven't they? So home advantage barely comes into it as well. Yeah, this is a nightmare to pick. Um but not because they're in form. Um 
you know what? I'm going to go purely on because they'll be desperate to stay in the playoff places. I'm going to say FC by two, but zero confidence. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Warrington. I'm going to go Warrington. Warrington by eight, I'll say. Um, I I think there's been a lot of talk after the England game about will that boost the Warrington players, all of the ones that were picked mind-bogglingly um, in that squad. And then the ones that actually played, certainly in particular George Williams, um, performed well. Then there'll be a few other players wanting to prove a point won't they? Um, either because they didn't get selected in the England side or they were forced to play for the combis or um, they've just, you know, got a point to prove. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to go Warrington. Warrington by eight. I just, it's going to be interesting though because Hull certainly go into this, you'd think, with the better pack. But then again, Warrington's pack There'll be a few players in there who's had a bit of a rest, a bit of a chance to re I just... It's hard. It's hard. I could see both sides winning this mm. game. I could see both sides losing it. Um, I'll stick with Wire. Uh, Friday, 8pm, Wigan versus Toulouse. I think Wigan should win this one, hopefully, by a few points. Um, Kai Pierce Paul is apparently going to be back, available for consideration for Wigan. Um, the way... Pete spoke about that it kind of suggests like he's going to play in limited minutes which means he's already got a bit of a plan around his rotations in mind um, which is always a bit worrying I think when you go into a game because anything can happen but Wigan should win comfortably shouldn't they against bottom of the table so Wigan by 16 yeah um, yeah the, the, the Wigan are a much better team Wigan by 14 uh, Sunday 3pm two sides who According to the league table, there's not much between them. Salford and Wakefield, both on 10 points. Uh, Wakefield have had a couple of good results recently. Salford were looking stronger, but then they've hit a bit of a speed bump. Um, What's your guess for this one, Al? If only Wakefield were playing Warrington. (laughs) But they're not. Um, (laughs) Salford by four. Not by much, but Salford for me. Yeah, I think it's a pretty even game. Um, but Brody Croft's been very good for Salford, hasn't he? Um, Can Co still scoring tries every week? And I think home advantage might just help as well. Salford by six. Mm-hmm. Uh, third game on Sky. They're treating us this week. Uh, Sunday, three fifteen p.m. Hull Kingston Rovers hosting the Huddersfield Giants. A rerun of the Challenge Cup semi-final. I mean, everyone will be hoping Hull KR are more competitive and fluent in this game than they were in that game. But Huddersfield just don't let people get around them. They don't... They're so controlled and composed. And I can't see... I think it's a massive clash of styles and cultures, isn't it? These two sides. There's there's a bit of chaos and off the cuff of Hull KR... And there's the process at Huddersfield, but the process is third, th- fourth in the league, um, and the the chaos is seventh. So I'm going to go with Huddersfield. Huddersfield by eight. Yeah, what is it? The uh, um, incredible force against the immovable object. It's not quite something. that, is it? Not quite. Um, Huddersfield by ten. I think Huddersfield are a, a much better side than KR. And then finally, say. Sunday, 3.30 p.m., Castleford versus Catalans. Do you give your secret favourite team <laughs> any chance at all against the uh, high-flying Dragons? Uh, the only chance they've got is would be if uh, the French contingent within the Catalan team were, were tired. But I, I think even even with that in mind, I think, I think they'll beat Cass quite comfortably. Catalan by, let's say, 18. I think it'll be closer than that, but I've still got Catalans winning, but I do think they're going to have to possibly bring Tyrone May into the half-backs alongside Pierce with Morg out. That, that'll that disrupt things a little bit. Um, so it, it means they won't quite have... Um, he got about five tries this last time he played that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you... you, you 
you you're relying on things to work out rather than being confident 